Active Target 2 is here with two new sonar views exclusive to Lorance. Garmin has really been the leader in live sonar and forward-facing sonar since they came out with their Panoptics transducers. They just keep one-upping the competition. And Lowrance really came close with their original Active Target. We're going to take a look at the Active Target 2 and see how close that gets to not only the LVS32 Live Scope, but the LVS34 Live Scope Plus, and possibly even the Live Scope XR. One thing I talk about a lot in my videos is how Garmin is just that much further ahead software-wise on their units than the rest of the competition. So take a look at this video I did if you wanna see what I mean by that. So I'm hoping a lot of the features that Garmin has brought to the market will be available on HDS Pro with Active Target 2. Can't wait to get my hands on one to just check that out. The main thing that Active Target 2 is going to bring us is three new sonar views, but they do come at quite a cost because you need to have two Active Target 2 modules in order for these views to work. And if you already have the original Active Target, we'll call it Active Target 1 for the rest of this video, that will not work with these sonar views. You're going to need two Active Target 2 systems. So let's take a look at these views now so you can see what they are. So with two systems, we're able to have two different sonar views. The transducer can be pointed at two different angles, and this is gonna require some different mounts if you have the active target one. So the first view we get is the scout and forward. You can see both of those on the far left. In the middle, we have scout wide. So this is gonna be two transducers in the scout mode angled to give you this expanded view covering almost all around the boat. This does require the additional scout wide bracket. Then we have the 180 view. And this is gonna be two transducers, one basically pointing forward and one back a little bit. And that will give us a 180 degree view down below the boat. This 180 view is the closest thing that any manufacturer has done to come to my request of having a software switch to go between forward and down rather than a physical rotation of the transducer. So now with the two systems, we're able to point one back, point one forward. That will give us coverage under the boat and ahead of the boat as well. Now the downside to this is just look at how much screen you're wasting on these units. You can see how much dead space there is. It's close to half the screen, I would say. It's probably a 40-60 split between information we're actually using and just dead space on the screen. So that is the downside to these views. So Active Target 2 offers these new sonar views but what does it do with beam stitching, interference, ghosting, all of those things that Garmin got rid of with their LiveScope Plus over the original LiveScope? Well, Lowrance is calling this the smoothest image they've ever had and their highest resolution live sonar. And so far the images that I've seen definitely reflect that and so does the video. This is the first video of Active Target 2 that I've seen and we have a very clean and smooth image. There's very little beam stitching and next to no interference. And here's the down view with a school of bait fish swimming over that school bus. Again, same thing. Lorance's claim of the clearest and smoothest image really holds true with this as well. The other thing I'm noticing is next to no interference, which we saw a lot on the original Active Target. So it looks like Lorance really did improve upon their Active Target system with Active Target 2. As far as compatibility goes with the Active Target 2, it'll work on the HDS Live, HDS Carbon Elite FS units, as well as HDS Pro, obviously. If you wanna see these new views, those are gonna be exclusive to HDS Pro, so they won't work on any of your old systems when you have two Active Target systems connected. One thing Lowrance is really talking about with their Active Target 2 system is the target separation at distance. So looking at these screenshots, we've got schools of crappie 90 feet away from the boat. So when we're talking crappie, we're talking 10, 12 inch fish. And you can actually see this separation very clearly with this Active Target 2 transducer. The Active Target 2 transducer is going to look just like Active Target 1 other than the number 2 designation on the transducer so you can identify it. But there is one other thing that they've done to the transducer. They've added new white markings on the alignment marks so it's much easier to align your transducer. So you can see here in the different views we have those white marks to help you know how to angle your transducer correctly. So wives everywhere are thanking Lowrance for this so their husbands no longer steal their nail polish in order to make these marks themselves. We'll take a look at the different views so you can understand them. The standard ones we've had with Active Target 1, these are the shaft mount brackets for a cable steer like a Ghost or an Altrex. We have Forward, Down, and Scout. If you have a Minn Kota Tarova or XI5, then you'll have these mounting options here for the same views. Again, Forward, Down, and Scout with the motor mount bracket. 
And if you're not too familiar with the different views that we've had with Active Target, here's the forward mode, the down mode, and then the scout mode. Now the new views with Active Target 2 and HDS Pro is really what separates it from the competition. So let's take a look at those in detail now. So these 3D models will show you basically how the beams are going to work together to give you the picture that you're seeing on your screen. Forward and Scout is the two transducers, one in forward, one in scout mode, and then displayed on your HDS Pro with a split screen view. The 180 view takes the two transducers, one angled forward, one angled back, to give you the 180 degree coverage below the boat and stitches those two beams together to give you a display on one screen. Now this view I think is going to be great for anyone who does a lot of vertical fishing such as you know smallmouth fishing on the Great Lakes where we're going to have full 180 degree coverage of our boat. We can display this on our bow units and on our console units so the angler in the front and back can see everything that's going on all at the same time. And then finally our scout wide view very similar to the 180 view however the transducers are just mounted with the optional bracket in the scout mode to give us this huge coverage around the boat in scout mode so i want to just blow these up a little bit more just so you can see them and get a better understanding of how these views are going to look so we'll look at the 180 view first so as you can see the orientation of this is almost like side imaging where we have this zero line in the center of the screen and then to the right and left we're looking out 60 feet so if your boat's about 20 feet long this is basically how it's going to be oriented on the screen now again my only complaint with this view is just the amount of dead space on the screen so hopefully we can fill that up with a split screen view here's a look at the forward and scout mode together this will be helpful when you're targeting fish with your forward view you're going to be able to see how they're using structure relating to structure and which way they're going when you lose them in the forward view you still be able to see them in the scout view Lawrence also brought out a scout shallow water mount which is going to be optimized for water less than 10 feet and because of the angle that the scout mode typically would be at it usually wasn't all that great in shallow water this new mount is designed to fix that problem and here's an example of it looking at a boat ramp of course one of the biggest questions if you're already an active target owner should you upgrade to Active Target 2? Well, let's look at some comparison shots now. We have Active Target on the left and Active Target 2 on the right. The settings are the same on each transducer here. If you notice the top right in Active Target 2, when you compare that image with the top left, the intensity of the signal is that much stronger. Much better sonar returns along the entire bottom. The detail in the trees looks about the same, but it does look like it may be picking up targets further away a little bit better. And here's another example. The bottom image definitely looks with a little bit finer detail in the bridge piling that we're seeing there and even in the bottom to the left of the bridge piling. So to me, it definitely does look like a higher detailed, smoother image that Lawrence is claiming. So here we have Active Target 2 again on the top and Active Target on the bottom. And on the left image, you can see that school of bait fish around 20 to 40 feet, just that much more intense than the Active Target. So, so far in all the images that I've seen, they definitely have made improvements to Active Target 2 sonar. Now, whether or not it's enough to make you upgrade, that's something that you can decide. Now, as far as pricing goes, we're at the same point we started out with with Active Target 1. 1649 will get you the Active Target 2 system. And remember, if you want to use the three new views that are available to HDS Pro, you'll need to double that number. And their optional scout wide bracket is $80 to add that. There's an optional transom mount bracket as well. Should you do a lot of back trolling, this would be something you could add there, but you're definitely gonna to wanna to keep it out of the flow of water while your boat's on plane. So when we're mounting dual Active Target 2 systems with HDS Pro, we do need to use the blue wire on the power cable and link those two together in order to do the ping synchronization feature. This will eliminate interference when you have those two transducers operating at the same frequencies at the same time. So there you go, that is Active Target 2 from Lowrance. Let me know in the comments what you think. Do you think Lowrance did something really cool with those new sonar views for HDS Pro users? Or do you think they should have focused more on the software side of it and given you some of those features that Garmin has that we haven't seen on Lowrance yet? And hey, who knows, maybe we'll get those in a software upgrade. If you're interested in getting all the information on these products, check out the video description where I've got links. You can check out all the pricing and all the specs on these products. If you haven't seen the other videos on the new product releases from Lowrance for 2023, take a look at that playlist as well. If you do have any questions, please use the comments to ask. I'll be sure to help you out. Thanks for watching this video.